This is part two of a book review I'm doing on the book What's Our Problem by Tim Urban. And in my first book review, I set up his model of the ladder and I talk a little bit about something I think it's missing, but I very much love that model. I think it's so helpful. In this video, I actually went to go over my favorite diagram in the whole book. I think this diagram is so good at explaining some of the game theory of what's going on. And this one actually builds on his ladder model. So I recommend going back and watching that other one first if you haven't already. But the basic idea is that he's imagining higher and lower selves, where the higher selves are acting like scientists, they can speak across difference, they, um, they're good at learning from other people, at taking on different perspectives. The sports fan is sort of the next layer down, and that is the person who has things that they want, but they also want the rules of arbitration between the groups to be fair. So they're rooting for their tribe, they'll you know, be biased toward their tribe just like sports fans are biased when the referees make a call, but they really are trying to be, you know, they want the, the fair rules. The lawyer is sort of taking one side and arguing in favor of that side, and then the zealot is very emotionally attached to that one side, and anyone who's against them, they're just bad people, that kind of thing. So he's got this higher versus lower spectrum that's set up in the other video. But this direction, this emergence direction, I think is brilliant. So he has sort of the higher, the scientists, and he says when they get together, they're actually really good at sense making. These scientists can sort of learn from each other and create a collective group intelligence that's open-minded and good at processing different types of information, good at processing different viewpoints. Some of these people in the group um, compel other people to take on their side, not through force, but rather through um, argument and through, you know, logic and uh, making good cases for their, their case. And he's giving a name to the group mentality of people who are all learning from each other, trying to do a good job of collective intelligence. He's calling that collective group intelligence the genie. And then down here, when you have zealots who are just fighting for their side and they come together, what you get is groupthink. And the groupthink creates a collective conscience among the group that's the golem. This is sort of the entrenched position who's out there and, and is very us versus them and cannot see across different perspectives. So I love that personification of the group intelligence of these two different groups. And then he says, as you sort of collectively get different groups with different um, well-functioning thought processes together, you get a bunch of different genies who are working together to create a super genie, which accounts for many, many different perspectives. And I, I love this because I do think one of the things going on right now with technology is that technology is creating this amalgamation of perspectives that's creating a super intelligence. And that super intelligence can be good if it's, if it's doing this well, if the lower la layers of this are actually good at sense making, and it can be really bad and polarizing if you're down here. So he calls this rival golems, where you get the groupthink sort of working together here. The groupthink creates a collective conscience, but when they end up um, against other groups, you get these huge mega golems where people are clustered together and it's very us versus them, tribalized and very angry tribalized. So I think that's a wonderful way of explaining some of the game theory that's going on. And I also appreciate that he recognizes that the genies actually need an immune system. They need ways of recognizing, wait a second, are we moving into groupthink to where we're starting to become a golem? And if they recognize that, uh, ways of counteracting that human tendency to sort of form clusters and groups which might cause the group to go lower. Now, one of my critiques from my other videos is that he identifies two tribes, the left and the right, and I oftentimes simplify things to those two tribes as well. Sometimes it's not really about how many tribes there are, you're just trying to explain a concept. But I do think there are many different tribes, oftentimes they're clustered underneath left or right, but not always. 
And one of the um, problems that can arise is for the tribes that span both the left and the right, I think they can start to get their egos high because they think they're up here. They're, they're like, oh, we see good points in the left and good points in the right. And so they don't recognize that they have become a tribe and they've started to golemize their tribe. The last thing I'd like to do with this diagram is to relate this stuff to my channel and the way I'm thinking about the New Enlightenment. So um, I named my channel The New Enlightenment because it's an analogy with the Old Enlightenment where you had some entrenched thinking, the church had too much power, was abusing that power, and the people sort of collectively came up with a few techniques like the scientific method, like human rights, like consent of the governed, and those new ideas sort of took hold and were eventually able to... Um, overturn the powers that were so oppressive at the time. And I think right now we're sort of in this new enlightenment age when, when new technology is coming along and new technology is leading us toward in this direction at a really, really rapid pace. Like we might say, we don't want to end up here yet. We're not ready to end up on this side of the diagram. But technology is forcing that direction. It's creating these these collective intelligences, whether they're bad and mean collective intelligences or good and just collective intelligences. And so thinking about how do we sort of get away from the group think, get away from some of the bad stuff that's creating collective intelligences that are um, oppressive and sort of move more up toward a collective intelligence that's something we would actually want. And we have to do that while these forces are just pushing us in this direction at a really, really rapid pace. So when I look at the current situation and why do we need some new tools to update from the old enlightenment, a lot of it has to do with the new technology and the way it's creating movement across this diagram, whether we're ready for that movement or not. Because part of this might be, wait a second, we need to slow down the movement, at least for certain groups to actually have the space to build the values of the genies. And another thing I'd like to point out here is that golems use power to get their ideas across. So there's different types of power, and obviously in the past, guns were a main source of power. In the modern day, it's not just guns, it's also tanks and submarines and airplanes and whatever. But part of the old enlightenment was people recognizing we don't just want people to win the argument if they have the biggest guns. That's not going to do a good job of moving society in the right direction. Rather, we want people to use logic and reason and science and empathy to sort of create a space that's actually more legitimate for determining power and for determining what, what ideas rule the day. Now, one of the things happening today that I think he recognizes and points out is that some of the power that's determining who wins the argument is not about guns, but it's rather about shaming and social power and, you know, alignment with authority. And it's about some of these other things that are in, in essence social powers. It's, it's like the powers of the middle school bully group. Those are sometimes hard to point out because a lot of times bullies pretend to be the hero when really they're just bullying someone. The, the social power is actually really difficult to manage and even really difficult sometimes to identify. And with the technology that's moving us in this direction, we have um, new social tools that are sort of magnifying some of the middle school social dynamics in ways that we haven't figured out yet. Like pretty much everyone would agree that the person winning the argument should not be the person with the biggest guns. But when it's social dynamics that are that are power dynamics that are causing one party to win the argument and the other party to lose, that's also power having too much say. And I think one of the things we're wrestling with is the, the technology that's changing the social power dynamics and amplifying some of the social power dynamics. How do we get a hold of that? 
I think that's a wonderful way of framing the problem we have in society right now.